Good morning, good afternoon to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Hannah Knox. I am filling in for Shay Bagwell while she is out on maternity leave right now. Um, so I'll be in these user groups and other events that we run here to um, say hello to all of you on her behalf. So anyhow, today we're going to be going through some really exciting information in Web Focus Designer. But before that, um, I'm going to give you guys a quick update on our marketing IBI information. And Vijay Raman is, is going to be talking about some other exciting IBI portfolio information. And then we have Tony and Angie here to answer any of your questions at the end of the call. So again, the chat is open for you guys to chat with any of us panelists. The Q&A is also there. Um, please utilize the Q&A feature to ask questions. We can answer them via chat or we can answer them live on air. Um, again, thank you all. Um, as many of you know, we have the new IBI website. It is live. We're super excited about it. And it has all of the information that you all have been asking for and wanting to see. Um, please check it out if you haven't already. We have product documentation, education, um, access to support, a list of our upcoming events, and any of the other resources that you've been looking for. Additionally, we also have a new community that is launching very soon. I got to preview it last week and it's looking really good. I'm excited for you all to get in there and connect with each other and get answers to those questions that you can really find by connecting with other web focus and other IBI product uh, users. So um, keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm super excited to announce our 2024 Summit Roadshow that's going to be coming to a city near you very soon. Our first stop is going to be in Boston, Massachusetts. And at these events, you'll find um, an exclusive look of, at what's to come with the IBI product portfolio. You'll get hands-on training, labs, breakout sessions, and time that you can book with an expert about questions in your deployment. Or if you're interested in exploring something new, you can sit down with an expert and find out how you can do that in your deployment. So be sure to look for the registration page coming soon. You'll see that um, the, the summit information is on our website right now, but again, that registration page is coming soon. We'll also have stops in Washington, DC, Chicago, and New York City at the end of the year. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing you all there. Please come out and see us. Um, more information coming soon on that. If you're looking for our next virtual events or our in-person events, please check out our website on ibi.com, the events page. You can see and register for any of our upcoming events for this year. Um, and we also have the resources page with those recordings after the fact. Um, if you haven't already registered for our newsletter, please do so via the contact us site on our website, um, and we will be sending that out monthly so that you can get the latest and greatest from IBI. If you haven't followed us on social, there are the links. I'll be sending this out so that you guys can click that directly. Um, and with that, I'm going to um, pass it off to Vijay. I wanted to quickly shout out our Tech Refresh program. If you haven't already signed up for this, you are not on um, a Web Focus 9 series release please check it out on our website. You can find it by going to ibi.com onto the product page, and then you'll see a little shout out for the Web Focus Technology Refresh Program. Um, the link at the bottom of this slide also has that. Um, it's, the, it's the best way that you can get to the latest version of Web Focus and take advantage of all the latest and greatest advancements in Web Focus. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you guys as well. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Vijay. And we are going to, yeah, okay. I Perfect. stopped sharing, you should be good. Thank you so much, Anna. I'm gonna share my screen here and get going. Hey everyone, uh, first of all, a very, very happy new year to all of you. Thanks again for taking the time today to really uh, talk to us and listen to us. Um, and for those who don't know me, I'm Vijay Raman. I lead the IBI business unit here at Cloud Software Group. But first of all, wanted to, you know, start off by saying thank you. So IBI really had a tremendous 2023 and it's really a testament um, of you all, of all our customers who have really made this happen. So my agenda is short today. Um, I'll, I'll, I just wanted to kind of recap 2023, uh, what we did there. And I wanted to kind of give you a flavor of what 2024 will look like from an IBI portfolio perspective and then 
I'll get out of the way and we'll we'll get through some of the other um, you know better stuff uh, we we have lined up for you. Um, I also want to kind of wanted to make sure that everybody is aware how we are structured and what is our go forward strategy. So that's the reason I wanted to quickly take uh, 15, 20 minutes here. So as you all are aware, uh, going back to October 2022, um, Citrix and Tipco merged and we became Cloud Software Group, right? So think of Cloud, Cloud Software Group as one of the large you know, holding companies like you have or a parent company um, as you will like the way you have Meta or an Alphabet set up. So under these, under those brands, like you have the way you have Google or Facebook, Cloud Software Group under them has these large brands uh, you see, Citrix being one of them, Tipco, and then IBI as the other one. So the whole purpose of setting up IBI like this as an independent business unit uh, is that we kind of manage our own uh, PNL responsibilities and that allows us to be really be agile to all of you, our customers, to be really able to respond quickly to what we need and also make the investments where we think is the right for the benefit of a customer. So that's a really great setup for us to be able to really come here and say all the things we're going to do and really being able to execute you know, swiftly on that. Cloud Software Group overall is a is a very large company. Uh, we have revenues in terms of 4.1 billion uh, worldwide customers, and overall customers exceed 400,000 uh, in this case. But the the biggest point for you here is that uh, IBI remains a very very strategic business unit within Cloud Software Group, and we continue to grow. We continue to invest. Uh, last year, um, well, overall, we had a really great year. Uh, we came in exactly where we wanted to from a revenue perspective. Um, our teams have never been more stronger and healthier. Our roadmap continues to evolve really, and you'll see a taste of what we do. We are continuing to really invest in the strategic areas which matter most to our customers. And that's the biggest part I want you to kind of really take away that this is now set up in a way uh, for continued success for the benefit of our long-time customer and our new customers um, as well. So with that setup, one of the key objectives we have decided is that our extreme and all of our focus is going to be on our existing customers, right? So we are going to focus entirely on you. So what that means is that we are not really chasing a lot of new customers or new logos. When we do that, our energy was being spent a lot on that. Now, when I say that our focus is entirely on existing customers, what that means is really everything you have to share with us will be always be on the top of the list, like always. And we'll continue to really kind of prioritize and invest what we need for the benefit of you within your organization and, and deliver on that. Uh, that will allow us to expand our relationship in a very positive manner and bring out offerings which really kind of matter to you in your ecosystem, uh, be it on the data side or, or on the enterprise analytics side. So the quick taste of the portfolio, uh, how, how we are set up, because that's where I think all of the nice new things are going to be coming up. The enterprise analytics portfolio, as you all of us, as all of you know, consists of the web focus, which remains our marquee product. We have Focus, which uh, remains a very stable product on the mainframe. And then we also introduced Open Data Hub uh, for mainframe you know, last year. So all of the use cases you have come to love and use Web Focus will continue to come. Everything we are going to be doing this year and beyond will continue to enhance the use cases. We remain top of the chart and top of every analyst report, especially when it comes to reporting and scale. There is really no unmatched product out there with those capabilities. Just to give you an example, we have a very large um, you know, bank in the, in the US who has 17 million users using Web Focus. Another large credit card processing company has 5 million users uh, with Web Focus. So you can imagine the, the breadth and the scale of the product as we continue to make it more and more robust for especially the use cases uh, on the BI side on that. And, and you'll hear more uh, from me on that, on how 
um, how how we can plan to enhance that with the AI, if not in this session, the other session throughout the year, uh, you will continue to hear on that one. So this is our latest offering. So we introduced uh, last October, as you're aware, um, IBI data intelligence. So what this allows us to do now is to kind of really bring together all of the different use cases on the data side, be it application integration via iWay, uh, be it uh, data integration or data management, MDM data management with Omni, uh, be it you know data integration with Migrator or data 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 movement with Migrator, data quality. All of those are now bundled together in one single offering, and you can purchase that. You can add that to your portfolio however you want, but everything is going to be included what you see. We really not left anything out there which is not in the IBI portfolio for you to use. And the reason we did this again for the sake of value. So we really kind of want to focus on our entire energy, our entire efforts for the sake of our existing customers. And we decided this is one of the best ways to continue giving you more and more value in everything you choose to use. So you'll see, you'll hear more from us throughout this year on what these features mean, how it can kind of help you more. Um, I think we already had a couple of sessions. We'll continue to have more sessions for the sake of our, our customers on that. With these two in mind, I just wanted to kind of look back at 2023. So 2023, uh, we really came up came about you know right out of the gate uh, with really new new offerings and and different innovations in many area one of them was an open data hub for mainframe uh, which we came out uh, there and we already had really good adoption with our mainframe customers on how they can utilize that product in a way that they can keep the data on the mainframe but bring about the metadata for visualization wherever you want that's the simplest way I can explain the use case for that. The containerization strategy continues to evolve. Along with the focus, we have done all of the other remaining IBI products containerized, and our strategy there is very simple. We'll follow wherever you want on your cloud strategy. If you have an on-prem strategy, so be it. We'll continue to uh, provide all of our services on-prem. If you want to take it to a hybrid cloud, so be it. If you want to remain a public cloud, private cloud, no matter what cloud, the containerization will work with you and scale with you. We've also had really good adoption on that with quite a few customers using that and more and more coming in the pipeline. And our plan is in the coming year, other products will also uh, follow suit. Data intelligence, I, I just showed you that offering that was in October, uh, 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 we came out. And then last but not least, the IBI IQ is the code name for that. So that's kind of going to be the evolution of the data science capabilities we have uh, under IQ that we kind of really bring together all of the different data science capabilities to do what I call data storytelling. That will allow you a persona driven approach on your data science side and allow you to use all these capabilities as you wish to choose. So I'll speak a little bit more about that later. But these, these were the initiatives we did. Apart from that, we also launched uh, two big things. One was our customer advisory council. We launched that in 2023 North American market. We had some great sessions. We had some awesome, awesome feedback from a lot of these customers. Uh, uh, we had a virtual and then we had an in-person. The goal was to, again, facilitate discussion and kind of bring forth that area where we used to do before. And our customers have been very vocal in some of the feedback. And you will see all of that feedback getting incorporated this year. We are going to launch our North, uh, excuse me, the Europe segment later this year. So we're already talking to a lot of our key customers. If you're interested in participating, please reach out to us uh, either here or North America. Uh, that that areas will continue to uh, grow for us, and and we we invite more and more customers into into this area. Um, apart from that, we you know also instituted and refined our new feature, new feature request process. So what that means is when you reach out to us saying that, hey, I, I have this feature request not available, not done. I have this bug not done. So working very closely with Dan and Tony, who's on this call, what we have done is we've been able to institute a process by which we really are able to prioritize all of your asks and come back and tell you 
yes we have accepted it if we have accepted it when we will be able to deliver it if for some reason we are not able to accept it we kind of come back and tell you what are the reason we could not accept it and how we can work with you so this feature has really allowed us to be bring that agile presence to all of your request and this will continue to evolve as we bring in all of the other ibi requests into the same fold as well but again a big thanks to all of you for helping us you know continuing those requests and a big thanks to again tony and his team for helping you know really materialize this in a way which is really meaningful to you um, and and uh, all of our customers this is a new initiative that we are going to be announcing uh, later uh, this um, um, you know this month into next month so this is mainly for customers who are on the IBM i series platform um our web focus product will continue to work on that platform and we plan to kind of really evolve that i offering especially uh with a lot of lot of add ons on that so this is specific to uh, the IBM i series platform so we have a lot of customers through our IBM partnership there and all of those customers are going to get onboarded as ibi customers um, as we go into this year so this this specific offering will really help a lot for those uh, customers as well then i wanted to quickly um, spend 2 minutes on the strategic priorities this is important because this will give you a sense on where our focus is uh, for 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 this year one is like i said earlier everything we do is energy is going to be spent on retaining our existing customers so so please continue to reach out to us for any request any feature enhancements nfr our process is well set up to be reactive to what you do we will continue to enhance our cloud native architecture in a way which scales and continue to evolve that hybrid cloud strategy in a very meaningful way um, you know <clears throat> we want to see more adoption from our customers on that but again we understand wherever you are in your journey on the cloud we'll be ready to support you when when you are ready to make make that the the bi analytics uh, is is our you know biggest area so we continue to modernize that we continue to bring in all of the features but do it in a way which really makes sense and and do it around the solid use cases and a persona driven approach so that kind of really speaks to the number 5 here that how can we leverage data science more and allow it to be kind of really be in tune with your day to day right so that's the area we are going to tie number 3 and number 5 more closely together to really kind of bring about more benefits on the data science so we have the machine learning models today we came out with the nlq feature instant insights metadata classification our goal is to continue to simplify that more and more and bring about what i code named iq around a way which can help you narrate your data with your story right so that's the new things we are going to be doing and enhancing and making all of the product offerings more and more uh, modern for that on the mainframe side number 4 we want to create more value with everything we do that's why we launched open data hub for mainframe we'll be looking at more specific use cases on how we can help our mainframe customers continue to use the product and create more and more value and then last but not least number 6 um, i showed you the platform uh, on the enterprise analytics and the data side uh, what that will eventually look like uh, is a unified platform so this is something we are aiming for uh, i would say very late this year to early next year where we bring together the use cases in one unification for your analytics and your data side so what this platform will do again you already have a focus hub the web focus hub will evolve to become ibi hub and inside ibi hub will be that persona driven approach where if you have a specific data need let's say you want to do some data quality you'll be able to go launch those capabilities specifically or if you are a bi and you want to run some specific 
bi records you want to create and curate and author content you will be able to do that so that platform will be agile in a way by which you can adopt to it and around it will be that iq platform or the iq component which will allow you to use all of the data science capabilities in a way seamless to your use case so that's where we are driving towards this and our product teams this year are aligned exactly on that manner to help kind of drive more usage on the cloud help you integrate the data science more and and look at uh, some of the unified authoring tape capabilities and all of those in a better way so with 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 that this is definitely more to come from us but i wanted to kind of give you a glimpse of uh, where things are going to be in in this year um i'll pause here and i think there were a few questions um if anything hana you want me to um um answer or anything if not we can keep continuing with 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 the session and we can come back to q and a later as well but again i wanted to really sincerely thank you all for being our customers and as we continue to grow i'm really really excited the future cannot be any more brighter for ibi and again thanks to all of you who have made this happen so big thanks to all of us from the ibi team here and and continuing to look forward to collaborate and share with you all the new things happening in ibi thank you yeah i think we're set on on q and a to move forward we have one question in the q and a box that we'll answer later later on in the session um but thank you so much for jay for that update and dirk if you want to take it away with your presentation that would be great thank you Thank you very much and I'm going to start the presentation here I'm going to share my screen and we will go from there Okay so today we are uh, going to talk about web focus designer the building of web pages so the specific topic about this is about how we can leverage the knowledge that you have gained um, in um, your environment by using App Studio, the HTML composer building um, uh, appealing visual user interfaces. And we'll see how we can leverage the knowledge that you have and um, just make it available in the designer tools. So as you know, App Studio, is a client-server-based desktop environment. And um, as a WebFox App Studio user itself, you also know what the workflow is to create those interactive pages. So you select a new HTML document, you select a template, and then use fe the feature-rich IDE to build out the forms using visual design concepts. You can add charts, reports, reference existing content, you can add parameters, task and animations, JavaScript and more. And then use a web browser or a dashboard to view and interact with those pages. And you probably ask, can the power of HTML Composer be mirrored in designer? And the answer is yes, and so much more. The designer is the one tool that addresses all of it from content creation to geoanalytics automated insights to the creation of pages and portals. Today's focus is on assembling pages and portals and how to leverage your knowledge of App Studio and HTML Composer to gain rapid results. Here's an example of what a web focus designer generated page can look like. And we're going to build this as part of today's session. So you will be able to apply concepts familiar to you in the HTML Composer. You can populate filter controls, source from static lists or external procedures. You will have a modern way to handle dates and date time selections, even with named date ranges. You'll be able to create tasks and animations, convert them to full interactions, and even extend those interfaces with advanced JavaScripting, if so required. Many of the functions previously only available through JavaScript that you're uh, aware of um, are now available and configurable features in the designer tool. And um, not to forget, everything is based on themes. 
stylings that inherit from portals to pages all the way down to the reports themselves without the need to recode any of this. Okay, so I want to continue to show you um, how, what kind of interfaces you can build. And let me just change this too, and then we're just going to build them. Okay, let me close the screen here. I'm going to start up my web focus system and I'm going to log on to web focus. So here's an example of a portal that uh, was compiled to showcase a few different styles of interfaces, screens that you're able to build. Anything from key performance indicators with the ability to maybe uh, click on it, open, drill down to reports, drill down to other pages. That's one of the options that you have. Maybe to start those reports as interactive screens that then open up. You can um, integrate insights, collaboration functionality, alerts, um, conversations, whatever there is to it. You will be able to build screens, and I'm sure that many of you have built those screens that I want to call uh, an information application, where you have um, a combination of maybe uh, multiple panels here, you have a ranking report, so tabular report, you will have some mapping, you have the ability to interact, you can start to build those screens that have uh, filters collapsed and visual filters you will be able to select from there. You'll be able to um, not only select, but also have smart selections. You'll be able to do something like, I want to search for all of the both items and I want to select them all and I want to update my screen. So it automatically just filters on those areas. So you can search and use the selections here. You'll be able to um, use the functions to maybe maximize, minimize all of the things or many of those things that in the past you had to program into um, the HTML composer piece. You have the ability to uh, create bookmarks. You can say, I want to look at only those that are camcorders excluding web sales. So this is something I looked in before. I said, this is what I want to remember when you look at this. These are now the camcorders um, without web sales. So if you want to scroll those down, look at the product categories, you will see these are all the camcorders. So these are functions here. One of the exciting pieces that people have asked for many times is the ability to print your dashboards. All of this is part of what you can um, do building those new design interfaces. So if you say PDF landscape, you click on the button, features that you no longer have to program. And you see here, it shows up, the whole screen is printed. No coding required, nothing. It's just a checkbox. I'm going to show you how to set this up. Okay. You will have the ability to integrate new functionality, and VJ was talking about some of those, like uh, data science, machine learning, natural language query. You can ask questions. Show me the three top three product names for revenue from January 21st, 2022 to March 31st in country Canada. So this is something that the system then automatically translates. You're saying, I'm asking the question and Web Focus will give you the answer. Think about it as, hey, Siri, tell me what the sales are. And here's what it says. These are the top three. Oh, my Siri is starting. I apologize. Uh, so this is nice. And I know uh, we have um, people on the call that have worked with me in the past to build things out for other, other customer screens. And one of the functions was, how can we ensure sure that those screens work nicely on uh, mobile devices, on tabs, on telephones? And the mobile, the responsive integration is really also now configurable and it's part of the product. So if you say, let's you have an iPad, the iPad, you will see it's automatically shrinking to the size that is needed. If you have it on a phone, what it will do is it will even resort it. It will no longer have it all shrink into something non-readable. It has the reports available. It has interactivity, drill downs, whatever you need here. I want to do the trend by month. It drills down. But not only this, also the tabs that you have here, 
will be available so that they actually um, adopt adapt to the sizing of the screens. See this here. You have the ability to um, certainly also set it up in different ways. Different ways as maybe um, some of your interfaces went wrong. Please try again. Yeah, sorry. This is Siri, my Siri. Um, you will have the ability to set this up where maybe you have applications where on the left side you have reports or a collection of pages that you want to offer, and those can be set up as well and then show up on the screen. Geographic integration, a lot of things that we can talk to you more, but I'm going to show you just interactions. Interesting with the assembly of pages is that the content that you build does not have to be built in the designer. It can You can actually leverage the content that you have built in App Studio and just build them, um, integrate them into those designer pages. So much more that there is in here, but I won't go into all the details. If you want to see more, by all means, put something in the chat and we'll work with you to show you some of this. But today, what I want to show you is how to build a screen like this. An analytical screen, in this case, we have four panels. We have the hiding and showing of panels. We have the ability to put parameters in place, integrate reports, and then allow the interaction of those reports as well. So if you want to drill down trend by month, you click on it, and it clicks to the month. So having said that, I am going to show you how to build all this. So let me switch to my Web Focus homepage. OK. So the Web Focus Hub um, has a few options. And I think in the last year, you have gone through quite a few sessions in the user forum where you were able to sh um, see how you do you create content in the Web Focus Design. So you create visualizations, you maybe compose documents, and um, how to get data and other things. Today, we are going to look at how do I build those pages. And building pages is really not building, but assembling visualizations. So we can click on Assemble Visualizations. And then when we assemble visualizations, and this concept is also a concept that is uh, hopefully familiar with you, for all of you who have built the in the HTML Composer pages, you can use templates. Templates are quick starts. Quick start so that you don't have to start from scratch from a blank canvas. So there's a few out of the box templates. You can use any web page, any uh, page that you uh, generate and that adheres to your layout. You can define them or make them available as a template, as a starter template for new work. And I did this here. I created a four panels info apps template. And what this is doing for me to simplify my work it's actually creating those four templates. It is using the color coding that I want, and it has a couple of placeholders for parameters that I want to leverage. Okay. So it the whole design in a web page is grid oriented. So you have grid orientation. You see here uh, 12 different um, items, you can configure however many you want, 12 is the default, and then you align content based on um, the sizing that you want. You want to have three of those panels side by side, you would just probably shrink it and add another of those panels. Okay, so, and you can have multiple of those um, info apps templates. This one I uh, named four panel info app template. There's nothing preventing you from creating a six panel info app template or whatever you need it to be, okay. So you have this concept of themes. Themes really means you have styling that you can define saying, we want to have a specific font. We want to have a specific uh, size of the uh, different elements. And even the panels themselves could have multiple styles. On configurable, and you will see a little bit later, all of this, whatever you define as a color, will pass through all the way from the report from the page to uh, the report to the individual items in there. And the beauty of this is uh, it's standardized. You build your content, even if you have slightly different layouts and you put it in here, it automatically enhances the content. Okay. So 
Um, here you can say I want to configure my content here to maybe, I'm just going to look at the settings here. I want to show a page heading. I want to enable the features. I mentioned to you we have uh, functions here that allow us to do a show the export function, bookmarks. Maybe you want bookmarks. Maybe you don't want bookmarks. You can enable, disable them. So in the past, these were all JavaScript functions that you had to um, code into it. Okay? Show page refresh, don't show page refresh. So um, what we see here is we have a layout where we have our outline. What does What are the individual elements? We can look at those. Uh, what are the filters that we have here, parameters that you can uh, put onto the screen, and I'm going to show you in a moment. And then you can add containers, you can add your content. And as I mentioned to you, the content that we have here does not have to be built in the new designer. It can be built in, for all I know, it can be built in the report painter, in App Studio, or even in the um, script editor to dialogue manager or do other things with this. Okay. Uh, I have said enough. We want to add the content here. The four quadrants that we have is a ranking report, a map, a chart of quantity by category, and uh, matrix markers. So that is the first one here. I'm going to take out. Set this up here. I'm going to um, add the, not in the images. I'm going to look at my design assemble, my content. The first one is a ranking report. I'm going to add this to the canvas here. I'm going to add my chart, um, the quantity by category in here. Um, for my page here, I have, I'm going to look at the outline. So this is the container. So these are my filter bars here. The filter bar here, I do not need for this particular output. So I'm going to just delete it here. Okay, delete the cell here. And filter bar. And I'm going to add more content to it. My shipment here I'm going to also add my matrix markers so i create the content here i can then decide how to add more when i say add more you see here the filters that the system has seen that the ranking report the chart quantity all of those have filters attached so it shows up as a filter icon these are the filters product category uh, and others, it's a lot. We can look at the bindings here. Where does the information come from? The information um, is sourced from the data itself here. W of retail, and in the W of retail database, it is uh, pulling it directly from the database values. Okay, so these are the parameters. I can look at the hierarchy of those parameters. It automatically sees if you have a product category and a product name here. Um, the metadata has set product category within the product category of a product name within the product name. We have the products themselves. So I add the filters, I define where they are sourced from, maybe from external sources, and then I can add the filters to the panel. So you see here product category, name, state, province, all of those are added up here. And some of those parameters here um, are specific to um, the individual reports. Here. So this could be, I want to see my top 10. So that's the sort order here. I want to see my top 10. Um, I want to see my so top stand, 10 um, stores by revenue. I want to maybe here have um, the, um, I want to have my revenue compare by product category. I 
want to um, see now what I have see here is I have four different panels. I prepared three. So what I can then do is I'm going back into the narrative here. I am going to look at my filter bar. In the filter bar, in the format, I say instead of three columns, I want to have four columns. I add the four columns. I want to put the total product category. I want to show it as a pie, and I want to include the narrative. You see already it's all drag and drop. I want to uh, put now in here, I want to compare my product category by um, sales here, and I want to color code it here. So I'm adding this. I'm going to remove some of those items here. I want to delete those cells here. I can um, sh show or hide my filters. I can then see, okay, this is all good. I want to make it available. I want to fit it into the screen itself. So I will um, put this out here. I'm going to add this here so that it fits nicely. I want to add this here. This is good. And I'm going to pull information here. So now that I have put this out here, maybe those labels that I have, I don't want to have them on the top. I want to put them to the side and do the same here. Now we have the sort order and the sort limit. I want to keep them together. So maybe I need to define this as being this is 50% of the screen and this is 50% of the screen. So it fits. And now that we have this, maybe we don't need to have a label for the top 10, no label, top 10 st stores, and then grouping here, I make them as my revenue. And here, I want to have some other items here. This was a four one, I delete some of those cells to make it fit. The total revenue compare by whatever it is, show as and narrative. Narrative can, of course, change it or keep it. And then I also wanted to change this to put it to the left. Okay, so having done that, I want to now increase the sizing here so that it fits on the screen. I want to make this available. Oh, I want to make it available here, bring it completely together. And yeah, I can then say this is all great. I want to see what it looks like in full screen. I run it and what you will see in a few seconds is that the screen, when it comes back, has actually built this form. Okay, it has built sure. the form. Uh -huh. Just a quick question that came in through the Q&A. Maybe you're going to get to this soon. Someone asked, are you able to chain those parameters within Designer? Yes. And um, there are two parts. Of this. First of all, I'm going to show you how to chain the parameters. And awesome. then I'm also um, going to go into more depth if so required. But you see the page has been built now. We have those four panels where I had this top 10 store by revenue. After my page heading here. And sometimes you do need page heading, sometimes you don't. You can say, I want to use the function that says show or hide filters. This is a choice that you have. Some customers like it that you can use this hide and show as a button. But it is also um, possible for you to say, I don't like this. I actually want my users to have a slightly different experience. So I can select it. And maybe I want to insert a specific section. So I, I'm going to get to the um, to the chaining of parameters in a moment. Okay, so I want to create a, se a separate sections. I make it specific. I make it green, so you see. And in here, what I want to do is the parameters. I want to put in this section. The section that I'm going to have here is not only a section, but I also make it collapsible. So this is one of the other functions here. I want to put a container in. Maybe I want to put a grid container in here. This grid container is, let's see how many filters we have. I'll make it simple. I'll just keep the ones that we have here. 
And I'm going to drag those parameters in here, product category, product name, and no, I don't want to. I want to switch this here, go back into the outline here of my section, the filter bar, I'll have, maybe I want to have four column panel and I don't need the row three and four, delete those, state and province, order month from, order month to, and include web sales. Okay, I'm going to make this wider. I have the ability to say, okay, I do um, in my settings, I do not need a title because that's my filter itself. I don't need to enable the toolbar. And because it's all good, I want to select them all again and make them left justified here. I don't need this much space. The more space you can preserve, the better it is actually. And because now this is also no longer required as the a specific filter here. I'm going to delete this. And then in the settings, I can say, I do not want to include the default page filters. I want to have this sliding design. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to show you what the difference is. The difference now is that we have a design that you're probably familiar with with other applications where we interact and you see a an arrow that shows up. And if you want to add parameters, you just slide those parameters up and down. So that's what it is. Um, the settings of the, the whole web page, if you go back into the, the page itself, um, can be set up with using styles. And Designer 2018 is one of the default styles that is out there, but we have you can define um, others or use other defaults. For example, if I was to switch this to midnight, you see here everything from the layout, and I'm going to run this as well so you can see it in real life. Um, everything from the, the layout colors um, plus the reports themselves now inherit the style that is your corporate style. The corporate style for uh, colors, for fonts, for um, maybe even the layout forms. Maybe you want to have rounded um colors in those panels. Whatever it may be, that is all being inherited. Okay. So that is this. I'll switch it back to the designer so you see this and I see that I get some gap here. Important, I need to run it one more time so you see what the beauty is of what we just generated. Not only have we built this, the responsiveness that many of you have been asking for in the past is automatically given. So if you go here, you see now, instead of a four panel, we still have the four panels available, but they are now um, stacked because when you have a phone and you scroll, it's easier to scroll down to, than to scroll to the side within the phone. So that's what that part is. And now I promised I will get back to the filters. And when you look at the filters themselves, I'm going to collapse them all. So you see... We have a hierarchy of filters for the product category, state and province, order, month from, web sales, and so on. If I expand the product category, you do see that the product category it has a sub-component that says product name. And you can just drag, drag those in and out of the hierarchy. And if you drag them into the hierarchy, they become a um, chained filter. If you drag them out, they become a, an unchained filter. And um, again, those so, um, selections that are being made through chaining can either be sourced directly from the data or they can be sourced from uh, focus procedures. So sometimes maybe you have specialized logic, there's a special sort order, whatever it may be that you have that can be configured in the procedure itself. Okay. So really when you think about uh, what we just did is in a few moments, in a few minutes, we have built out this web page and there was no scripting, JavaScripting or anything involved. A lot of containers that are made available, anything from basic containers to tapped containers, carousels, those nice modern um, sliding views that almost like a TV screen every 30 seconds. Either you time it every 30 seconds, something shows up 
or a user clicks on a button saying next, next, next. All of this is available. According reports, I think you might be familiar with those. I already used the grid panel. We have the panel group. The panel group is important for us to keep parameters and the report itself together because if you do the, um, the sizing with the responsive design, if you didn't do this, it would just put all the parameters together and then you would lo lose context. But we also have other functions that I showed you earlier. The link tile, a link tile is an option where you say on the main screen, I have a report. It could be a KPI, it could be a number. If I click on the KPI number, a secondary report shows. And um, so it's almost like a drill down, not only from within the report, but a drill down from the report object or from the um, screen object. We have the Explorer. Uh, button and I showed you the exploration where you say I want to explore data, show me the uh, top three products within Canada. This is what I use there. And uh, we can work through this. Some other functions that are made available automatically that you can turn on and off is the ability to maximize, minimize content. Okay, so here you see the maximizing of content here. And the maximizing of content will show you the report. It will show you the charts here. If you, oh, sorry, I maximized the wrong thing. It will show you the report here. It has the ability to, um, we can have the, maybe want to see the product category based as a line. And instead of broken down by product category, I want to see them by sales quarter. And I want to look at the narrative. So these are functions that you can set up here. Um, and when you now maximize it, you will see it shows me automatically where focus reads what it sees in the data and describes it in English language. The, the revenue fluctuated. You should look at the um, um, uptick here. The growth is 1,803%. Whatever it finds in the data, it communicates with you. Again, the the printing here is made available and the, the bookmarks are also automatically there. Okay. So that is the content that we have. Content can be anything from a, um, a page to a report to a, um, a chart and you have seen us to set up those parameters. The outline, we looked at the outline uh, where we can look at the different uh, options here, the content, and then of course you can um, have other options as well. When it comes down to controls, other controls, um, this in the past was also um, things that you needed to put together. Sometimes the um, feature existed, sometimes you need to uh, control like calendar controls, and I'm going to show you a little bit more how those co calendar controls work now, where you can say, I want to look at the last three months. I want to look at the last five months. The user can control it. All of those is integrated into the product. The schedule, run buttons, radio buttons, uh, a lot of different things. Sliders, um, visual sliders that really are nice, nicely looking. So that is the uh, content creation of um, like a basic form. I shouldn't say a basic form. It's actually quite sophisticated when you look at this is uh, multiple reports, parameterized, drill downs, all of this embedded. And then all you need to do is embed it, either run it as is or embed it in your application or in, into your portal. You then start to save it. Save it, you call it here, Wednesday Designer. And I should spell Wednesday Designer. And it's now available on the screens. Okay, here we have the Wednesday Designer and you can run it or uh, publish it. You can make it available through security permissions to the groups that you want it to be. So I want to stop here uh, for a second here. Let me see if I missed anything. Around the source, and we talked about this. And yeah, um, one I did miss one item, so I want to open it again. So... The, and the, the one item that I missed is actually the configuration of the the configuration of the parameters through search controls and other controls. Okay. 
So that is something that I can do here. I want to open the designer page. When we look at the, some of the controls, when we look at the product name, for example, the product name has seven pages of this content. If I wanted to make this available as a searchable item, all I need to do is make it a search. Um, and now when you select on it, the search is here. I want to have the selection controls, the search plus the selection controls. Show. So everything is configurable here. And in the past, like I said, a lot of this had to be actually coded. I do want to point out that we have some other function we go to in, in a few moments, the interaction. But important also is the info. The info button tells us um, the parameters, how they are passed in into the individual sub-reports. You see the ranking report has all of the main filters here, product category, um, order month, and, and so on. But it also has rank measure that are specific to this ranking report, um, rank dimension, and some of those other top 10 and so on. Okay. So that is really a very fast walkthrough of the basics of the designer HTML tool. And you see a lot of concepts that should be familiar with you if you have ever built pages in the App Studio HTML Composer. So I'll stop, Angie, for a moment before I continue with some more advanced topics. Are there sure, any questions? Yeah. We have a lot of questions. Um, I will start with the easiest one. Can you say again which version of WebFocus this is that you're using? I am currently version uh, using the latest available uh, version, which is version 9.2.2. Um, but um, this is non we have gradually enhanced the um, interfaces. The first designer pages were available in version 8.207. But um, with all the functions that you see here, if you have the option to do so, I strongly recommend to always go to the latest available release. Mm -hmm. um, there was one question that came in about, is there a way to prevent two maximize buttons? But I think you showed that already. You can turn off the title and toolbar on a particular panel if you don't want the maximize on mm -hmm. uh, any one of those individual panels. Um, let's see. There are a lot of questions coming in. This is fantastic. Um, can you specify the sort order and the parameters, or is there a way to parameterize the filter criteria? So the sort order of the parameters, you have multiple options, of course. When you look at the parameter itself, see where the bindings are here. The bindings is the source, and the target goes into here. So if you look at this uh, bindings here, this is the default. It's coming from a data source. You can create a static list, and you can, of course, control the sort order. If you do a dynamic list, you have the option to do it from the data. Then here you can enable the sorting here. These are checkboxes, value by display, by sort order. If you want to have a specialized sort order, you typically um, go to the last option here that says create your own uh, web focus procedure. In the web focus procedure, you create a, a report that has an output format, PC hold format, XML. And whatever the sort order is that you define in your uh, procedure, that's the sort order that will show up on the screen. You actually just answered one of the other questions, which was how do you use a separate procedure to populate filters? So preemptively answered that one. All right, let's see what else we have in here. Um, there's a couple in here that I think I'll just take an answer. Um, there's one in here. Uh, can you use the IB Composer JavaScript commands in Designer that we could in App Studio? Um, so those commands don't transfer uh, directly into what will work on Designer. Um, and the main reason for that is really what we tried to do was implement through the UI the things that you needed that JavaScript for in the past, hopefully you don't need it anymore that you could just develop all of it through the UI tools. Uh, let's see. There's another question about the interactions, being able to hide containers. So I'm not sure, Dirk, is that upcoming? Anything? Yeah, it is, it is upcoming, absolutely. Show? All right, I so maybe let's go into that and then we'll answer the rest of the questions afterwards. 
Okay, so we uh, I want to get into two uh, other topics. Uh, the time selections and interactions, and these are the two topics. And then the third one is JavaScript API. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to do this now. I prepared another page. I'm going to leave this for a moment here. If I go into my designer assembly mode here, we have a, a sales analysis page date range interactions. Okay. So sample output is here. I'm going to show you how this works. So here is an example of what a, a screen can look like with specialized um, extra features. The first feature that I wanted to show is um, the date range filter. So the date range filter you see here, we have revenue by month and category broken down by the product over months. We look at the date range here, you have the ability to just not filter, or you say, I want to look at everything that is maybe uh, the last three months. Okay. When I say the last three months, you will actually see that it shows um, October, November, December. So why it's, does the last three months, October, November, December, is because these are the last three full months. Okay. If you wanted to have um, a partial, a year-to-date or a month-to-date information as well, there's another checkbox here. And um, I know one of um, you on the call he is one of the people I work with, with the customer. The customer asks exactly those functions. And that is one of those new feature requests that was put into the product, include up to current content. So now what you will see is it will rerun the report October, November, December, but it also has the partial information for January. That's all embedded here. So it's configurable. Um, you can say last day, month, year, quarter, years. You can say this particular one, this day, this week, this month, um, or you can say today, yesterday, of course, these are custom items, or of course you can control it via cal calendar and say, I want to see it from the 17th to the 24th. Click on okay, then you see everything is only January. And when, if we were to break this down by the days, you would see it's the 17th to the 24th. So that's one of the functions here. Interactions, another option here where we can configure to saying, if I click on a button or if a value changes, I want to maybe run a different report. Um, here I put some JavaScript in with some validation. This is not a validation, it's just an alert, but you get the idea. So you can say the JavaScript function that says, are those values, are the parameters correct or whatever else you need to do, you need to write something back. And then when you rerun the report, now it puts into this screen, it puts a different report or revenue by region. I want to run the revenue by region report. It shows the revenue by region report. So that's two things that we're going to walk through and I'll show you how to build. And then also the schedule library distribution, the self-service scheduling option where you say, this is great, I want to schedule it. And then yeah, what you will see is the um, scheduler comes up. I want to see how often do I want to run it. I want to run it every day or maybe every month on the first 17th and the last day of the month, the task, the distribution goes to either, and you can configure this, you want to do it into the repository in an email. If it's an email, you can then say, okay, please um, give us the email address. You say submit and it automatically uh, schedules. So these are functions here and the rest I think I already showed to you. So hopefully I can answer the question specifically to the hiding and showing panels and also the, to the passing parameters. That's the screen I want to build. And as I mentioned earlier, that um, I want to, um, I want to use the concept of really using templates. Okay, so I'm going to take the report, the basic report as you have here. And what you see here, we have a, uh, from here, from today, oh, from today, I want to run it. Um, okay, time selection, multi select from two, where's my two? I guess I did not. 
Um, let, me, let me just get there. I'm going to delete this control. And I'm going to use the category of sales, category sales, this content. The parameter shows up, add filters to the page. You see I have a from and a to button here. Okay, so automatically I added something, it detects that it's here. And if I wanted to uh, now com uh, combine the from and the to, uh, to control, so these are two parameters, I combine them, right mouse click, and I say combine. So this is my combined parameter. When I look at my time value here, this time value now has automatically um, now the custom functions, the last month, the, um, this month, and so on, embedded to it. Okay, so I template it too much, so I'm dragging it to here. Okay, so that is the first part I can um, at the time selections, all you need to do is uh, multi-select the from the two parameter, right mouse click, and then um, run the page. Okay. So the next part is interactions. Interactions is a button here. When you look at this, it says, I have interactions here. Um, I want to, the ta first task is, I want to maybe schedule a content. Oh, there's, there's analysis page. I want to do something with this. Okay. So, um, the uh, qu a question is, what kind of interactions do you want? I, if I add a button here, schedule, um, I want to interact. I want to edit the interaction here. So I want to schedule the content. That's what I click, click here. Good. Um, I want to schedule the content. Which content do I want to schedule? I want to allow either email, library, FTP, FTP, maybe user selectable, or just as an email. And um, then how do you want to display this as the, an output? It could be in a separate tab into a new window, overlay the existing window, or have a page overlay. The page overlay is really a window that shows up on top of your browser tab, and then you can also close it. So that's what I have set up for my schedule button. Okay, so you use the controls, you schedule it, and then you drag the prompt. Okay. Now, did this, you can do interactions with conditions. Okay, so uh, now interactions with conditions is this one. I have a report here. We have different reports. Maybe I want to... Um, I want to create this. I want to have report one, two, and three. So what do I need to do? Maybe I'm going to look at the different containers here. I want to have a, not containers, a controls. Uh, controls. The, I, I'm going to use a drop-down box. This drop-down box has um, multiple values here. So I'm going to look the a drop down, drag in the prompt section below, um, and settings. In the settings, um, you see uh, I have um, a few items here the control source, the sources, and A. I'm going to change this to a static list. And the static list is just make it very simple add row report, report one. Also to report one, adding another one, report two, goes into report two, and report three, goes into report three. Okay, so having done this, I want to, uh, depending on what I drop down here, I want to change this particular panel um, to fill in with different um, report options. So to do this, I am using the interactions again. Okay, so now my next interaction, I want to add an interaction. Um, the object that I'm using is my new drop down one that I just have added here. So in here, drop down one, the event is selection change. And if the selection change, I want to run content. I want to run content. 
And here to answer the question from before, I want to show or hide objects. This is here as an interaction where you would actually define, do I want to show an object? Do I want to hide an object? Run deferred and schedule content, or even use uh, external JavaScript functions. Okay, so simple. I want to run the content. The content that I want to run is. Hmm. Why don't you show up? One thing. There we go. I'm just too impatient. Uh, the content that we want to have is small widget. And maybe I want to um, use the cost versus sales, let's say category sales. OK, so I want to run the category sales. I want to put this in the target in a container. The container that I have is the revenue um, revenue by month container here. So this is where it goes. And I click OK. okay. I can add another task, run the content. Um, this time it's maybe the regional sales trend, not maybe the average cost versus revenue scatter. I want to uh, select it into the same window. No, not same window, into a container. And the container again is the uh, revenue by product monthly. Okay, now I have two of those. If I was to click on the button, it would run both and then it will keep the last one. What I do want to do is I want to put some conditions in. I want to say my condition is task one is um, this control that I have here, the drop down one. If it's any of those, if it's re if I select report two, if that is the case, then I want to um, run this section here and the scatter if I do report three. So I'm adding the condition if the drop down one is report three. Then I'm running this one. And then, of course, you can rearrange it and you can do multi chain. You can put JavaScript in and whatever it may be. So, if I do this now here, I run my report. And I know it's not the prettiest yet, but it will be very functional. We already uh, looked at the uh, parameters for with the uh, labeled. Um, date ranges that is there. The schedule button, I showed you the schedule button is automatically there. It has this overlay window, so it doesn't open into a new tab and all of those functions here. I defined it to be email, so it just asks for the email address. Otherwise, it would give you a dialog saying, do you want to FTP? Do you want to do a printer? Whatever you configure. And now from the drop-down box, look at the revenue by month and category. Right now, it's no value. If I select report two, it automatically now uses the category sales. If I do report three, it puts in the average cost scatter diagram. So this is also configurable. Um, and all you need to do is add the, enable the um, interactions button here, hide and show it and define what you want to do as an interaction. Okay. So the interaction wizard, we looked at this, we looked at the second task. I want to also show you the ability to um, enable JavaScript, okay? custom JavaScript. So how do we do it? custom JavaScript? We go into our outline here. We see here there's a section for specialized CSS, which I want to cover today. But there's also a section for Java. Derek, if you don't mind, um, I'm going to think I'm going to answer a couple of questions in yes. the Q&A. Okay. Um, so, there is one interesting one that came in that Hannah, I'm going to put on you for us to investigate this. There was a question, do we have access to this designer application or something similar so that we can see examples of all these things that designer can do? And what I'm going to say is maybe that's something that we can use the community for once it's live and available. Uh, we can look at maybe putting some samples out there in the community for everyone to access. Yeah, I think that that's a great idea and a great point and definitely something we can explore um, in the coming months. Awesome. And then uh, there was one, can interactions be invoked from another report? So if I click on a product on one report, can it do the interaction for another report on the page to get to the product detail? I think the, the 
example here would be I have one more port with a drill down and can that drill down link call the interaction? Yeah, the drill Eric, down I don't link. know if you've done that. I, I, I can think of a couple of ways that maybe it could be done. It may, may not be so straightforward directly in the UI, but I think I can think of a couple of ways that that could probably work. Yeah, so that is certainly something we'll um, take in a, a research project for us. Sounds like yeah. an interesting question. So yeah, if you um, have this and if you want to send even an email to Hannah to us or as a feedback, we can follow up with you individually and then we'll work with you to look at what we can do there. Yep. And then uh, I'm going to go back in, in time a little bit. There was a, a question earlier about uh, creating custom styles or a custom theme. So Dirk, you showed that midnight theme, which we ship with the product, about creating a custom style or a custom theme. Um, so yeah, if you want yeah, to so I'll show you here. So, oh, go ahead, uh, Angie, you wanted to. No, go ahead and show them and then I'll add on a, a little teaser okay, at the so end. Okay, so what we done. have is we have out of the box themes. These are considered the standard themes. These are the four standard themes. I'm going to show you the, the midnight theme as an example. And the theme is really a combination of a cascading style sheet definition and a web focus style sheet. So that makes up a theme. Okay, and you're probably familiar with the Web Focus STY style sheet file. I'm going to open that defines the report, fonts, the sizing, what are the headings supposed to be, whatever there's to it. But we also have a CSS theme. And the CSS theme really defines the various container types from page runner, whatever it may be, and the colors, the layouts, and how it's supposed to be compatible with different types of browsers. So what you can do is, and let's take the uh, this example here for the midnight theme. If you were to take those two here, I'm going to copy them. You define a new theme. So a theme, this is a custom theme. You give it a name. Oh, you give it a name here. Content, a new folder, call it Dirk. Virtual user group, okay. Dirk VOG, I'm going to paste into here. Now you have two files that are called and I'm going to publish it. The theme and the other theme. So let's say Arial is, it's cool, but we want to really make our standard size 25, just so you really see what it is. Okay, so Arial and this is the style sheet and you want to have the CSS, you um, have your definitions here. Maybe you have also different colors, gray, red, and green. So that's a, a Dirk style sheet the theme that I have, and um, you can configure it. Now, if I go back into building out a new page here, um, actually, let's we can even go into the assemble page that we had here before, designer, Four panels, Dirk. No, not four panels. Let's do the, oh yeah, four panels, Dirk. Edit. So if I go into my designer here, now what you will see is Dirk VOG now shows up, okay? It's a selectable uh, theme. If I select this now, you will see a couple of things. First of all, the font has changed here. And um, if I didn't uh, overwrite uh, it in the report itself, it would show up as 25 pixels. But you already see that the font is different. The colors show up now. So if you ask me, what does it take? You create two files. You create a subfolder in your custom area. You have two files, a themes.css, a themes.sty file. And then you put all the customizations, all, all of the specifics that you have into, this, um, into those two files. Yeah, I hope and then that answers the, the question. The little bit of teaser that I'll add there is uh, we, we understand that not everybody knows CSS or web focused style sheets. So we're actually going to be working on a UI version of creating some of these custom themes as well. So look forward to that. No timeline on it yet, but it is something that we are working on. Was there any other question, Angie? Or? There are. 
we have a lot of questions. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to them all, to be honest. Okay, so um, I, I will um, just very quickly go through the JavaScript so you see what it takes. Now, this one, we have a function called my validation here. Um, we have this uh, JavaScript editor that's embedded in the designer. It's smart. It has intelligent intelligence included. So it says there's a syntax. You can click on it saying, oh, this is not right. So you would actually fix it up here. So that now it makes it into a proper function. And this is my validation. This is alert. So I'm going to save that part here. I'm going to exit out. So that is now available. So if I look at my um, interaction that I had from before, this was my interaction three. I want to add another task. This other task is um, I want to execute JavaScript. The JavaScript function is my validation. And this is unconditional. I want to do it all the time. So it goes to before my reports are running. And if I now run it here as an option, this drop-down box before it was just simply filling in those charts. But you can say now the JavaScript or any functionality that you have configured in JavaScript will be made available in here. Okay, then so it runs the JavaScript first and then conditionally it runs the report that you select to be displaying. So there is that. And the last part, and probably in the interest of time, we are going to skip this now, is to uh, take your pages and either just make them available, which we already have, or add them into a web focus portal. Okay? And that is all I wanted to show you today. So Angie, if there are more questions, we can certainly um, answer all of those questions that are out there. Awesome. Yeah, there's one uh, similar to an earlier one. Uh, a, can you just show very briefly where the custom templates are and how to create one of those custom templates or just maybe not oh, show how to create Yeah, it, I'm, I'm going to show you how template. to build a custom template. Very simple. Um, let me just create a new. I, I can call it the Angie template. Yeah, let's say this is Perfect. my... Uh, actually, let's take something else. I'm going to um, new... And we talked about this, the four panel template. Let's say we don't like a four panel template. We want to have a six panel, a five panel template. Okay, so I'm going to change this here. I'm going to add another container, a panel group that goes into here. The panel group needs to fit. So there, goes up here. I'm going to put, uh, the, into the panel, I'm going to add a grid. And let's say this is all beautiful. Add this here. I'm going to change this format to be green. So just so we know that it's there, that it's different. Uh, delete the cell. So now we have a... There we go. I'm going to now save this as um, five panel. Five panel infabs template. Save it as. Okay. So any page that you have built, if the page, and typically you have very basic pages without the content in there, and maybe you want to change the font color, whatever you want to say. Let's say you want to even make this into red. Okay, so I'm going to save. I think I saved it already as the five panels. That's good. Once you do this, and I'm going to close this here now. I'm going to close this. Don't save. Maybe I should have saved, but I didn't. Um, I am going to copy it. I'm going to the sections here, which is the uh, designer, not designer assemble into my themes um, and you have one of the sections I showed you were the themes. The other section is actually page templates. You have legacy page templates that are out there, but if you do into and go into the page templates, 
here. Come on. Come on. Standard and custom, same concept. Doing custom. I'm going to paste it in here. So it's just a location where it needs to be. This is the five panel page template. I'm going to publish it. So now if I go back to my creation of pages, I create a new um, page. It asks the templates and what you will see is the five panel info apps template is now made available to us. Okay, so that's what it takes. Use any, use it to the layout that you want. Maybe you don't like this much space in between. You can even go to a point to saying, well, you know what, this is not what we have. We want to have the margin is three pixels, it's two pixels. There we go. Then we have two pixels, less layout. You save it. And then going forward, you um, can use this as your new template. Okay? So it's very simple to set it. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's see. There's one question. I guess someone saw a folder named widgets. Uh, was that something that you built, Dirk, in your environment specifically? Uh, no. When you um, when you set up Web Focus, there are a couple of um, change management packages that are prepackaged with the product. And those uh, small widget examples is one of those prepackaged change management packages. Just an example going to our retail database and showing uh, what you can do. So, so the short of the answer is it's part of the product. But, but of course, you can define any of your folders and saying, hey, this is where my widgets are, whatever it is. So in our last official minute here, I'm going to try to rapid fire answer a couple of questions here. So uh, first one, uh, can we change the class names in the UI for JavaScript purposes? Yes. So any of those objects, um, Dirk, if you want to show the visual, just click on something on that page anywhere on your, your panels and go to that settings. Oh. Tab. Yeah, let me just open. I guess we should open. Oh, yeah, I guess not the one. template. Yeah. yeah. So let's say is it of HT. Yeah, so we even have it on the, the page itself. There's that classes area. Uh, you can type in any class name there and then use those for some of those custom JavaScripts that you want to write. Um, another question that came in is, um, when you're creating a template, can you update the thumbnail to accurately show the manner of the template? Yes, you can. It's in the, um, so once you have that template in the custom folder, if you right click and go to the properties, you can change the thumbnail of that. And that will show up when you're uh, creating new in designer as well. Uh, let's see what else I can rapid fire answer here. Or Hannah, are we out of time? I think we're, Right on the edge. You no, know, we are we are right out of time. If you want to answer this question, and I, I know people may have to drop off at this point, but if you want to go ahead and answer this question, and and then I think we're going to wrap up for the day. Yeah. Um. So the the last one that I think I'm going to try to answer for today is uh, there was a question that came in about using App Studio content in Designer itself, and what do we do with our existing App Studio content? So, um. I, I did respond in the in text to one of them was any of the charts and reports, any of those dot text files that you have in App Studio, you can reuse those in designer pages. Also anything from Info Assist that you created, you can put into the designer page. Um, so yeah, it can fire off those web focus folk execs, um, any of the hold files that you have in there, even if you went into the text editor and wrote a whole focus language dialogue manager, you can bring that into the designer page too. Um, yeah, and I get, I think that's probably all I can answer, but usually what we do is, uh, follow up with any of these questions that we didn't get to answer and try to get back to you on them after the session overall. Yes. All right. Thank you everyone for joining today. Thank you, Dirk, for presenting. Um, thank you, Angie, for hopping on the Q and A and Tony as well.
Um, we are looking forward to seeing you guys next month. Again, keep posted for more to come on the road shows. Again, these are full day education events, guys. We want to see you there. I think that there's a lot of benefit for you and your teams. Um, feel free to personally send me an email if you have any questions about the specifics of those days and what topics will be covered. Um, but again, registration for that will be live soon. Um, with that, have a great day. We're looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye.